<laughs> Dr. Karanga, thank you so much for joining us, Soulmates. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with the founder of Kwanzaa. Now, we talked earlier about the meaning of watch night services earlier, which is a tradition that African-American culture celebrates to this day. Why do you think, Dr. Karanga, that it is important for blacks or any culture to have traditions and celebrations about the origins of their heritage? Yeah, because that's part of culture. A lot of times people have a superficial conception of culture and see it as song and dance. But culture in its best, in the, in, in, according to my philosophy, Kawaita, culture is the totality of thought and practice by which a people creates itself, celebrates, sustains, and develops itself, and introduces itself to history and humanity. And that expresses itself in at least seven basic areas. In the area of spirituality and ethics, that is religion, history, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, which is your art, your music, your literature, dance, etc., And then ethos, the collective psychology you achieve as a result of practicing those other six areas. So that's what we are. When I say culture is, is the totality of thought and practice by which a people creates itself. If you don't have that, you don't have that culture, you don't understand yourself in your wholeness. And how we understand ourselves determine how we assert ourselves in the world. So we have a deficient memory, a deficient understanding, a deficient education and knowledge about who we are. Then that's how we assert ourselves in deficient and often self-deforming ways. Got it. Man. Let's talk about Kwanzaa. Why was Kwanzaa created? I created Kwanzaa for three basic reasons. I came out of uh, working on my doctorate at UCLA and join the movement. I wanted to make my knowledge relevant. Dr. Mary McClabber said, said, knowledge is the prime need of the hour, but we want to know what you're gonna do with your knowledge. And she said, it's up to us to, guess what? To discover the dawn and then share it with the, our youth and the masses who need it most. And so what I wanna do is create an institution that aided in the struggle. So Kwanzaa became an act of freedom, an instrument of freedom, and a celebration of freedom, an act of freedom to break away from the catechism of impossibility and the deformed definitions of who we are. Second is the instrument of freedom, to call black people together to struggle to define, defend, and advance their human interest and to resist those who violate it. And third, it was a celebration of our process, a celebration of freedom of our process of doing just that. I created Kwanzaa for three basic reasons. One, to reaffirm our rootedness in African culture. We're an African people. We're not from Europe. We're an African people, right? But we were lifted out of our own history and culture and made a footnote and forgotten casualty in someone else's. That's what James Baldwin was talking about. And so our struggle was to return to that history and culture. The struggle as we define it was to be ourselves and to free ourselves. Those are interlocked, to be ourselves and to free ourselves, to be ourselves without penalty and oppression to be ourselves and come into the fullness of ourselves. That's part of what it means to be free. The second I created uh, Kwanzaa in order to give us a time when all over the world, African people could come together, reaffirm the bonds between them and meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be the fathers and mothers of humanity and human civilization? What does it mean to be the sons and daughters of the Holocaust of enslavement? What does it mean to be the authors and heirs of the reaffirmation of our Africanness and our social justice and racial justice and resistance history in the 60s? What does that mean? And Kwanzaa, more than any other time, gives us time to do that all over the world. Millions of people throughout the world, African community, on every continent in the world, celebrate Kwanzaa. And finally, I created Kwanzaa in order to introduce and reaffirm the importance of communitarian values values that stress and strengthen family, community, and culture. And of course, the hub and hinge on which the whole of the holiday turn or the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles, Umoja unity, Kujichagalia self-determination, Ujima collective working responsibility, Ujima cooperative economic, Nia purpose, Kuumba creativity, and Imani faith. Oh, mm. wow. I'm learning so much today. I don't know about you guys, but for our soulmates that don't know, can you tell us exactly where the word Kwanzaa came from? Yes, I, I, I use Swahili words and because Swahili is the most widely spread language. And I, 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 I did independent study to learn it and I chose it because it's Pan-African. It belongs to the whole of Africa. 
and we belong to the whole of Africa. I don't do any genealogy chart. I choose all of Africa. I don't choose one ethnic group or one one country. I choose the whole of Africa as my heritage and all the people as my family. So what happens is uh, <clears throat> when I named the holiday, it was a first fruit holiday. It's based on the harvest celebrations of Africa, especially the Zulu one of Umkose. But in Swahili, it's Matuna Ya Kwanzaa, the first fruits. Well, Kwanzaa, which means first, has only six letters in it. And there were seven children at the beginning of the celebration of Kwanzaa in our organization that wanted to do an acrostic. And I added an extra A on the word Kwanzaa to make Kwanzaa uh, as a holiday to show the emphasis we put on the person rather than the point. We say, keep the person, you can always make the point. Lose the person, you can't ever make a point. Mm. So the point is people. And that's the name of our organization, by the way, us. I'm chair and founder of the organization us, which means us black people. It stresses our focus on people. It stresses our distinction from them, us uh, as, a, as distinct and opposed to them, our oppressor. And finally, it reaffirms our communitarian values that stress us as a people. Dr. Karenga, thank you again so much for being here. Can you talk to us about Kwanzaa's global impact? Yes. Kwanzaa is celebrated, as I said earlier, on every continent in the world, throughout the world African community. In fact, this week I did our first virtual international Kwanzaa celebration, and we broadcast to Africa, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, uh, North America, uh, Black communities in Europe and in Asia. And so everywhere that Black people are, and we were, we were talking especially because I put on this uh, PowerPoint uh, uh, presentation along with my lecture, and I was showing how Black people all the way in Inuit land, Nunavut, which is up uh, near Greenland in northern Canada, are celebrating Kwanzaa as pictures of them. And we collect pictures for our archive of people all around. And what it has done is what it does in this country. It gives us a ground, a moral guidance, and a cultural ground for understanding ourselves, asserting ourselves, grounding ourselves, orienting ourselves, and aiding us in directing our life toward good and expansive ends. It reaffirms the sacredness and expansive conception of who African people are. And that's the beauty of it. It makes us focus on the beauty, uh, the sacredness, and the significance of being African in the world. Mm. I love that. So um, our YouTube soulmates, and thank you so much, Dr. Karinga, for uh, stopping by. Our YouTube soulmates are literally loving every single minute of this uh, interview. Monique says, yes, Kwanzaa teaches us so many values our community should live by. Casey says, this is such an awesome lesson. And Kim says, I need to do my research. Uh, it's never too late to do research and learn. I knew about Kwanzaa, but I never uh, did enough research about how it was founded, and I'll do that more now. So when we come back, soulmates, we're not done, okay? We're going to return with Dr. Karenga. He's going to take us through a lesson of the seven principles of Kwanzaa. That's next right here on The Black Report. So our special guest today is the founder of Kwanzaa. Yes, the founder of Kwanzaa, Dr. Maulana Karenga. Yeah, and he's here today with us. <laughs> okay, so doctor, before we go into the seven principles of Kwanzaa, what do you need to celebrate Kwanzaa? Well, you need, first of all, knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, second, you need appreciation. And third, you need symbols. And finally, you need the will to practice it. Mm. So okay. you need to study, you need to get the book, go to the um, official Kwanzaa website .org, get the information, get my book, Kwanzaa, A Celebration of Family, Community, and Culture. You need to read and study. Mm -hmm. Then the second, you need to have an appreciation for yourself and see how this gives us an expansive conception of ourselves. And you must appreciate always the need to protect the integrity, to, or to advance rather, the integrity the beauty and expansive meaning of Kwanzaa. And then you need the symbols. We're talking about the seven symbols and, and supplementary ones in a minute, but that's what you need. And then you need the will to do it. And you need the will to not do substitute, not to use plastic substitutes for real fruit, for example. Hmm. To not do, when you're doing this lighting of the candle, don't use a cigarette lighter, use a match, right? Don't, don't try to do shortcuts. You have to, don't use a Jewish menorah for uh, uh, an African kinata that is a candle holder, right? Don't do those things. 
That's what I mean by appreciation and by taking your time and having the will to do something beautiful because you're celebrating yourself. People always ask, can other people celebrate Kwanzaa? They're not asking, can Native Americans or Latinos or Asians? They ask about white people. And the question is not whether white people can celebrate Kwanzaa, but whether that not they can celebrate black people. Mm-hmm. Can they sit in a room and just appreciate the beauty of being black, the soulfulness, without claiming it also and wanting to officiate? Can you just sit down while you are not the subject of every sentence, right? And just appreciate other people. You know, this yeah. is what multiculturalism is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Respect for each people and culture as a unique and equally valid and valuable way of being human in the world. That's the first and most fundamental uh, 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 principle of diversity. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Doctor, are there any greeting terms that we should know about? Any greeting terms? Yes. We say habari gani in Swahili for what news? And usually we say in Jema, good news, right? Because we're blessed to be here, right? And to struggle another day. It's a beautiful mm. to carry on the legacy of our mothers and fathers and those before us, right? So that's a beautiful. So we, but during Kwanzaa, we say, Habari Ghani, what news? And the answer is the day of the principle. So on the first day of Kwanzaa, Umoja, you say, Habari Ghani, you say, Moja. Today is near. So when we say, Habari Ghani, the answer is near. So that the principles are always put up in the forefront. They're foreground constantly. All right, so uh, Soulmates, we have a little bit, we, he's, he's given us a, a little sneak peek, but right now, from start to finish, we're gonna go through the seven principles of Kwanzaa right here, live on The Black Report. So if you have a Kwanzaa setting, light your candle so that you guys can come along with us, okay? So now, Dr. Karenga, we have about a minute and 30 seconds for each principle, so are you ready to get started? I'll be ready. Okay, <laughs> okay, so and if I say it wrong, just you know, let me know. So, Umoja? Celebrated on the December 26th. Yes. Umoja. Yes. Umoja means unity. To strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, and culture. Okay. Me, to strive for and maintain uh, unity in the family, community, nation, race, and world. And oh. Okay? Okay. Right. I added the world for explain because of a world African community. Oh, we got you. Because <laughs> you can do that. Well, let our soulmates know about Kuji Chagulia. Kuja Chagulia is self-determination okay. to define ourselves, to name myself, to create for ourselves and speak for ourselves. Okay. Okay. All right. The third principle, Ujima. Am I right? Yes. Ujima, collective working responsibility to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters' problems our problem and to solve them together. All right. What about the meaning of Ujama? Am I saying that correctly? Ujama? Yes, Ujama. Ujama. The last Ujama. name you draw them out. Ujama. Ujama. Ujama is to build and maintain our own stores, shops, and other businesses, and to profit from them together. The concept of shared work and shared wealth. Mm. It's so important, especially right now. Yes. 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 And so today we're celebrating Nia, correct? Or yes, yes, Nia is yes. easy. Right. A lot of people name that. <laughs> Nia means to make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. Okay, and tomorrow we'll be celebrating Kumba. Am I saying it right? Kumba, yes. right. Kumba, it's creativity. To do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited it. Mm, so true. Okay, right. doctor. And the final one, which is celebrated on January 1st, Imani. January 1st, Imani, faith, right? Mm. To do, to believe with all our hearts in our people, our parents, our teachers, our leaders, and the righteousness and victory of our struggle. To believe that what we're doing, the struggle we wage to expand the realm of freedom, justice, and good in the world is righteous and will eventually be victorious. Mm. Yes, it will. All right, doctor, before you go, tell us how we can learn more about this, please. We can, in fact, as I said, order my book from Sankoy Press mm-hmm. uh, uh, dot com, S A N K O R E Press dot com, and also go to my website. You can get this this um, this information from my website, uh, official Kwanzaa website dot org, mm-hmm. and also Maulana Karenga dot org. If you go to those two, you can get a lot of information on Kwanzaa and get the authentic source. You can read other sources, right. but to make sure it's right, 
get it where it was created, where it was right. found. Oh, it's so, right. so, so nice important. to have you here. Yeah. So important Thank that you. it's right. So Mace, make sure you do that. Thank you, Dr. Karanga, for joining us Thank today. You so on Black Thank you, Dr. Happy Kwanzaa to you. Happy Man, this has been amazing. Very, very You're welcome beautiful. back anytime. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thank Kwanzaa. You. Not sure about you guys, but I learned so much. Oh, man. I mean, yes. we got the knowledge today. Like, mm -hmm. we really did. So, um, our YouTube so is actually really, really, really enjoying this uh, interview. One actually said, excellent interview. Said it plain and simple. Uh, another YouTube soulmate, Kim Johnson, says, wait, what? He's the actual founder of Kwanzaa? Like, how epic is that that we had him here today? Yes, uh, man. Another YouTube soulmate said, that's incredible. I applaud you, my brother. The founder of Kwanzaa. Now, one more uh, said, you better say that, Dr. Karenga. I think that was when Melissa and I busted out in laughter uh, when we were talking about uh, uh, racism. Yeah, yeah. So.